Green, a tale of two drives and of two kickers. The Bearcats go to work first in half number two. Reggie Taylor scoots for 17 yards on the first play. Then quarterback Billy Davis, gaining confidence, smartly scrambles for 10 yards into Temple territory. Then freshman running back Al McKinney breaks loose. He gets 22 yards on his first run from scrimmage, and the Bearcats are inside the Temple 15. Here, the defense stiffens. Taylor is stopped by Pilkoskis for a two-yard loss, and Cincinnati must go for three. But Barone's 27-yarder is wide left. The four-minute, 66-yard drive comes up empty. Now from the 20, the Owls go to work. Five consecutive Paul Palmer runs. The second one gets 11 yards around right end. Three more runs yield another first down out across the Temple 41-yard line. Now Bruce Arian sees the Bearcats' aggressive pursuit and tries to take advantage with a reverse to Keith Gloucester. Gloucester bangs for 15 yards to the Cincinnati 41. Salt then throws a bullet to Gloucester. He nearly breaks it into the end zone, but the 20-yard gain leaves the Owls at the Cincinnati 11. Arians goes for the reverse once more, but this time linebacker Alex Gordon is there. It's a five-yard loss. The Owls must go for three. Freshman Billy Wright gets the call. He sets and kicks, and it's wide right. Both teams have moved swiftly between the 20s, but neither team has points to show for it. As the third quarter winds down, the Bearcats still lead 10-7. to The Owls will have one last chance in the third stanza from their own 18. First down, Palmer gets eight yards. Then on third and two, he gets five for a first down. Salt sends Palmer out as a flanker. He's got it on a delay pattern underneath the zone defense. A 17-yard gain into Bearcat territory. Then Palmer, the runner, a 23-yard pickup. His longest run from scrimmage of the day to get the Owls close. When Shelly Poole pops off the bench for eight yards and a first down, the Owls will begin quarter number four, first and goal. On the first play of the last quarter, the Owls finally go back on top. Palmer around and into the end zone standing for a 14-10 Temple lead. On the Bearcats' next possession, a pass interference call will keep the drive alive. On third and 13 of the Cincinnati 47, Davis hits Taylor for 12 yards. It's fourth and one with 11 minutes to go. Dick Carey chooses to go for it, but Taylor is stopped for no gain. First down, Temple Owls. Neither team could move the football, and on Cincinnati's next possession, they are forced to punt. Sean Burdick's punt dies at the Temple five-yard line. When Lee Saltz is nailed for a three-yard loss, back to his own two-yard line, it's third and 11. Will the Owls play it close to the vest and let the defense try to win the ball game? Bruce Arian says no. Well, third and 11, we, we've got to get a first down. They've blocked our punt, and uh, we can't be playing cautious at that point in time. And, and we're giving the ball in the 50-yard line. We had to slow them down. The play was designed to hit Paul on an out and up. Willie had caught that square in out of that formation three or four times, and... and the corner bit on the square and then saw Paul and, and came back off of it. And, and Lee had his arm cocked just about let it go to Paul and re recocked it and let it go a little bit high to Willie and went through his hands. And, of course, it bounced up. Luckily, and Keith Gloucester was running a clearing route and it bounced right to him. And away he goes. Away he goes indeed. A 96-yarder to break the backs of the Bearcats. One of the longest gains ever by Temple. The longest touchdown pass in the career of quarterback Lee Saltz. Two years ago, Tim Reardon went down with an injury against Penn State. Into the ball game goes Lee Salt, who nearly leads the Owls to an upset victory. After the game, Joe Paterno says that number 11 can really throw. Two years later, Lee Salt is a lot more than just number 11. On a team where Paul Palmer is the showcase, Salt is often a supporting character. But on this day, the quarterback was the star. A 70% completion rate. Over 300 passing yards, and at last, a break goes his way. It's about time that one finally went our way. You know, we've had some tough breaks all year with uh, field goals and just plays that could have gone either way that have gone to the other team. So it's about time we got our share. Lee has been providing his share of the offense. Even when Palmer is in charge, the hands of Lee Saltz are a key. I think that's just another great credit actually to Paul Palmer because the teams are, like you said, are following him and uh, I know if I make a halfway decent fake to him that they're going to all run over there to him to try and stop him. So uh, I try and work on that a lot and really 
and have a good fake so that the receivers become more open that way. His receivers were open most of the day at Riverfront, and Lee took advantage. His coach says Lee is always ready to take advantage of his opportunities. He's a competitor, and one thing he does, he works hard at everything he does. That's why he's our number one quarterback, uh, because he's first, and he runs hard, and he does everything. He works hard, and he wants to be good, and uh, he makes plays for us, uh, and he made big plays today. My work habits are probably one of my strongest parts. Uh, I learned that in high school, and my two head coaches were very discipline oriented and uh, that really helped me and it carried over as far as my work habits are concerned into Temple and it helps me it helped me as far as winning a quarterback job and every other thing even even off the field it really helps and I think that that is a real important factor after the 96 yarder gave the Owls a 21 10 lead Arians knows the Bearcats will come back throwing he sets up a deep zone defense with Eddie Parker playing center field Parker does not commit to the receiver. He holds his ground. And when Davis's pass is too high, it falls into the lap of Parker, his second takeaway of the season. Immediately, the killer instinct for Temple. First play following the intercept, Arians calls for the streak pattern. Willie Marshall right up the sidelines. Salt hits him right in stride for the knockout punch. When Cincinnati scored a touchdown with just two seconds remaining, the Temple Owls left Riverfront winners by a score of 28 to 16. That we could come back in the second half and especially play the fourth quarter like we did. I was awful upset with our kicking game. You know, uh, we moved the ball extremely well and then don't get any points out of it. Now that's two for two good field goal kickers on this team and neither one of them's kicking very well and uh it's time they get the lump out of the throat and start kicking the football for homecoming day the owls will need more than just the breaks to go their way they'll have to play hard-nosed football against the scarlet knights of rutgers they got a good football team i know that they got a good defense they're going to be ready for us it's a good little rivalry going right now and uh it's homecoming and so it's, well, it's gonna be nice to play at home it's been a long time and uh, we're really looking forward to it for the first time all year, the schedule will work in Temple's favor. After playing four or five on the road, it is back to Veterans Stadium for a little while. Now with the travel behind them, secondary coach Nick Rapone sees things falling into place. We're real excited. We've been on the road twice. We've come away with good victories. We're improving in every phase of the game. Our kicking game's improving. Our offense is improving. Paul Palmer's running hard. Defensively, uh, some of the young kids are coming around. Some of the older kids have been playing very steady. We're excited to come back to Philadelphia for two weeks. Week one begins today. It is homecoming with the Owls taking on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers University. Rutgers is winless with a tough schedule that has seen them play the likes of Penn State and Florida. The cornerstone of Coach Dick Anderson's philosophy begins with solid defense, anchored by a talented linebacking core. This linebacking core here is probably better than Penn State's linebacking core. What they have, they have a youngster by the name of Tyrone Stowe, who was Sport Illustrated Player of the Week against Florida. He was second team always last year. The other linebacker, Ray Oakey, was honorable mention always last year, and he's been beat out by a young man by the name of Matt Bachman. So between the trio, there's three pretty good linebackers. They're all good size. They're all about 220, and they just flat out get after you. Their offense is just, just that far away from being a good offense they return four to five people on the offensive line so like any good offensive team you got to have that foundation and they have it they have two quality quarterbacks now Hawkburn was benched last week for the first time they've gone to young man Gagliardo who's an excellent thrower but they still have two fine quarterbacks they're just a little ways away from coming on the similarities between the schools are evident like Temple, Rutgers is on the verge of establishing itself as an Eastern College football power. The traditions are not storied, but the futures are bright. Rapone thinks this competitive atmosphere can benefit both programs. It's going to become a great rivalry. We've been here two years under Coach Aarons, and the first year we beat him by a point, last year we lost by a point. We recruit the same student athlete, okay? We run into each other on the road recruiting. We play the same common opponents. So this is going to be a big rivalry, and I tell you what, each year it's going to be a close football game.